Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are one of the most beloved action figure lines of all time, one that has spanned three decades and multiple generations of kids. But no toy line has combined old school nostalgia with modern sculpting and articulation like Super 7's Ultimates line. Hey y'all and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics, history, and action figures. Starting in 1988, Playmates Toys produced over 100 different figures for their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line. 30 years later, San Francisco-based Super 7 released their Ultimates figures, modern updates on the figures that we all loved. So let's have a look. Wave 1 got it all started, including Raphael, Master Splinter, Baxter Stockman, and a Foot Soldier. So the guys at Super 7 are no dummies. They know that if they came out with a first wave that included all four turtles, people like me would pick that up and then probably be done with the line. So instead, they sprinkled the main turtles throughout the first four series. And of course, you got to start with a banger. And who else could that be? other than Raphael. Now, I'm going to do my best not to refer to him as Ralph in this video. I did a really crappy job of that last time. I know that it's Raph. I know what his name is, and I know the personality that really comes through on this figure. Now, Raph comes with two different heads. He has this unique head, but he also comes with the original Playmates version head, and we'll see that for each of the turtles, but I kind of like this newer one. I think it has a little bit more sculpting and detail, and when it comes to sculpting, that's where this figure really shines. Look at that shell. You can see all of the detail that's in there. Of course, they have far superior articulation all the way through ball joints. You can get them into some pretty crunchy poses, but that's not all. The accessories on these are so cool. Yes, you've got these great looking metal size. He does have his knife that fits right into his backpack, just like with the original Playmates figure. But like the original Playmates, they come with the old punch out weapons that are all stacked in and made out of the brown plastic. So just like in the original, you get this, but all of those are also available as painted, updated versions. Now, you also are going to get a ton of different hands. I'm actually throwing them all over the place. There's so many. And a couple of special bonuses, such as a turtle communicator, both open and closed, and a slice of pizza. So you, you can see with this raft figure just exactly what you're going to be able to expect from the rest of this line moving forward. Master Splinter's original Playmates feature famously came with a soft goods uh, cloak here. And you can see that this one with Ultimates does just the same. Now he's got his great long bendy tail. He has his stick, but he also comes with his bow and arrow. And these are really nice, just really, really well done. This head sculpt is very reminiscent of the original Playmates figure. And if it turns out that you're just not a fan of the soft goods, no problem. They've got you covered on that because he also comes with a harder plastic rubbery version as well that you can use. Now, two of the more unique accessories that Splinter came with were his coffee mug, which is steaming hot, as you can see from the smoke coming out of it. And he came with a miniature little turtle. So he's got one of his future sons right there with him right from the beginning. The Foot Soldier from Series 1 is another fairly accurate representation of the original Playmates version. He just feels like he's kind of a, a bigger sized, better articulated version of the original. He still has that kind of leaning forward head and neck, and you can get him into some pretty good poses with all of this uh, articulation, particularly the, the ball joints at his hips and at his shoulders. Now, he comes with a set of his original weapons, and we did get updated versions of all of those that have a little bit of extra paint apps on them, but there's not a lot going on here that really makes this guy stand apart from the original other than his larger size and his improved articulation. Where things start to get interesting for Super 7's ultimate lines is with the monsters and the mutants, like Baxter Stockman here. Now this again is the look that we saw in Playmates line, just done so much better. Look at the 
detail of the sculpting and the fact that these arms are fully articulated. Just the same with the wings, all on ball joints. That head is so grotesque, getting all of those insectoid looking eyes and each of this little individual hair sculpted with with his antenna coming out. I love the fact that he has a needle and it's actually poking through the jacket of his lab coat, which is ripped and shredded. He's on this body that really gets him into some crouching positions. This is the kind of thing that we're going to see as we move forward, where the Ultimates team really takes some liberties and one-ups what Playmates was able to do back in the 1980s. Wave 2 picks up right where things left off with the Turtles leader, Leonardo, the crazy mutagen man, the evil shredder, and the monstrous Bebop. Wave 2 begins with my personal favorite turtle, Leonardo. And oh, he really captures the look of the leader of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, this one again is very, very classic with the Playmate style with the crossing bands there and the fact that you can slide his katana blades right into the back. And boy, these are really nice with a lot of added paint detail and a really nice silver to them. Now, just like his brother Raph, he does come with his original Playmates head, which just has the teeth showing on one side and those kind of rounder eyes. Obviously, I like what they did with this newer head, and this is the one that I'm going to keep on here. But if you want to talk about the one who's going to be standing front and center and leading my turtles, it's always going to be Leo. Shredder is another of the Ultimates figures that feels like kind of just an expanded version of the original Playmates. Now, he's really nice with the soft goods cape and his cloak here, but if you would prefer for him to have more of a, a rubberized cape, they did provide that as well. What I really like is what they did with this head. You get the more classic shredder head, but then in a nod to what I think was either a running change or just a variant, you get the one with the painted on eyebrows. So it really brings back just sort of the silliness and some of what Playmates was doing as they kind of found their way in the action figure aisle with this incredibly huge hit. But you gotta have a shredder, and this one is certainly pretty nice for our collections. Okay, man, now things are getting fun with the last two figures that come in Wave 2, starting with Bebop. Holy cow! Look at how huge this figure is. Where's a turtle? Let me find a turtle. Here's Splinter. Here's Splinter for comparison. Here's, here's Raph. All right. This is the difference in size between Bebop and Raph. I mean, this dude is appropriately a monster. And look at all the detail from the nose ring to his fangs, the sunglasses, with the pink mohawk that's tied in a braid at the back. He's got little, like, skulls with, like, rings and hands coming off the turtle shells. There's detail. There's different buttons on his vest. Ah, this is where this line really starts to excel. And I think it's pretty obvious when you see a figure this good. But, man, we are not done because they followed it up with Mutagen Man. And this thing is just so great. I love the fact that there's so much asymmetry. The The stuff that's going on over on this arm is completely different over here. You can see like the muscles breaking through on both his arms and his legs. He's got two different feet. This one has the claws and this one of course has like the metallic brace going on. But look at that creepy, creepy mutant on the inside. Oh, it is so cool with those bug eyes and that fully sculpted brain poking out. And the eyeballs are flying. Look, there's details in here. You guys know I know my anatomy. Like, there's two lungs, a heart. There's what's supposed to be, I guess, intestines with maybe a gallbladder popping off and a kidney all rolling down. All fully sculpted with, like, a skull and the eyes coming out. Mutagen Man is so cool. And they didn't simply stop there. They actually gave us a glow-in-the-dark version as well. So this is obviously the same sculpt, but you can see this kind of yellow-green plastic and all of the plastic on the inside is glow-in-the-dark. So I can't remember. I think this was a retailer exclusive. This may have been a Big Bad exclusive, but I had to pick it up just because of what an absolute masterpiece this figure is. More classics are coming your way in Wave 3 with the Turtles prankster Michelangelo. 
the gigantic Rocksteady, their mechanical ally Metalhead, and of course, April O'Neil. Wave 3 starts off with our main man, Mikey. And, you know, Mikey always gets kind of portrayed as almost like the kid brother of the group, kind of the, the goofy, cowabunga dude. And I get that. I mean, they have to all have separate personalities. But, you know, Mikey definitely gets a little bit of redemption as we go through the remainder of his comic story arc. Such a nice figure. I love the metal chains on his nunchucks. And, of course, they fit in the back just like they did on the original Playmates figure. Now, this is of the alternate head, the kind of newer head, they did, of course, give us the Playmate's head with just the mouth open on the one side. So he was basically kind of the opposite of Leo's head. But one of the cool accessories that came with Michelangelo was you saw that with Raph and with Leo, we got slices of pizza. With Mikey, we get the box. Yes, there it is. A pizza box with a slice of pepperoni on the inside and We've got some cheese crust going on up here at the top. So really nice. It's not articulated. It's fixed. But you can put the other pieces of pizza in there. But we're three quarters of the way through the turtles. And this one is definitely a winner with Michelangelo. Unfortunately, not nearly as impressive is the April O'Neil figure. She was kind of a doofy looking figure in the Playmates line. And they really managed to capture that aesthetic in the Ultimates line. Just really kind of an unfortunately proportioned figure you know, not fantastic. I think this is maybe the old school head. She does come with her ID badge for the press and for the news. And I will give them credit. They did did at least give us two separate additional head sculpts, one with her headphone on and one with it off. And these are a little bit darker haired than the original, but never been the hugest fan of cartoon April. And, you know, this this woman with Popeye looking forearms is probably one of the biggest reasons why. No worries, though, because Metalhead is here to step it up. This is another one where you really see the advance in 30 years of articulation and sculpting. So they took what was already a really cool Playmates figure and then went all out with all kinds of incredible detail all around this figure, even down to each of the different little nooks and crannies. He's got his grenades, his legs, the articulation's nicely hidden by the joints there. This is a really, really cool figure. He's the exact same size as the other turtles, so he fits in nicely with them. But this is one where they took a really cool Playmates figure and made it even better in the Ultimates line. But of course, the gem of the third wave is none other than Rocksteady. Holy cow. Look at the detail on the sculpting of that great rhino head. And he actually gets pretty good bend, so you can get him into some like cool-looking poses with this. He's got the right proportions. He's so huge across his chest, but he's still really big through his feet and his waist. He's got the turtle shells coming off of his pocket. There's even like, I don't know if it's, it's almost like a clear plastic that's up on the top of these goggles that really kind of gives them that much more of a sheen and a look to it. Again, to give you an idea of his size, here's Raph standing next to him. I mean, he's not double his height, but he's double his size. I mean, just really a mega massive figure and one where Super 7 was like, oh yeah, let's take this and go absolutely extreme with it. And they did just that. Wave 4 keeps things rolling, literally with Donatello, 80s personified Mondo Gecko, the phenomenally sculpted Muckman, and their loyal ally, Casey Jones. Yeah, did I say that Leo was my favorite turtle? Ah, sometimes it just depends on what day it is, because it can definitely, on other days, be Donnie. And I love this Donatello figure. Of course, he still has the the suit right here where he can hold his bow shaft, but he also, the articulation of his hands and his wrists and elbows really allow him to hold the other bow staff nicely, and you can get him into some really cool poses. He comes with the more stern look. You can see how his brow is furrowed down and you don't get any teeth showing, which actually is really cool. His playmate's head, you know, kind of has that double doofy look with the kind of triangle eyes. I definitely, once again, for all four of my turtles, prefer, prefer the newer looks going on. The purple looks so good against his more olive turtle skin. Just again, another fantastic figure and a way to round out our four core turtles in the line. The Casey Jones figure gets a plus from me because it maintains 
that animated Playmates look, but it also adds a little bit of a comic look, too, with some of the blue shading coming out of his hair. They did a great job with this hockey mask, and I believe he comes with an unmasked head as well. I didn't pull that one out, but it's all the accessories that really take him to the next level. He's got his hockey stick, and if you come over here in his golf bag that he's got strapped across his shoulders, he's also got multiple bats two of which are broken, presumably from smashing up against other mutants' heads when he's out fighting with Raph and the other turtles. So Casey Jones is pretty sweet. You know, he's he's got that purpley kind of look from the original Playmates line, the, the 80s cut shirt. You know, there was a day back in the 80s where I could get away with wearing a cut shirt. I may not have had quite the six-pack that Casey had, but, you know, I, I could have pulled that off at some point. Now, I would have worn a mask, but... No, I just, you know, I think I could have I think I could have rocked this. Speaking of things I rocked in the 80s, I was quite the skateboarder myself and that's what you get here with our main man Mondo Gecko. Check him out. He's actually got braces. I actually that's the first time I've noticed this as I'm looking at this figure. He has braces across the front of his teeth. Of course, one of them is out so that his little gecko tongue can come flying out of there. But he has got all of his rad skater stuff on. He's got a glove on one hand because, of course, he does. Elbow pads, knee pads with a skull and a spike because that's totally useful. These look kind of like Chuck Taylors, which were the shoes that I wore from about 1985 to about 1988. Uh, he's got his hat on backwards. Oh, he's just so 80s. Of course, if you're going to be a skater in the 80s, something had to have a skull on it, and he absolutely captures all that. Plus, you know, you don't want that tail dragon, so he's got a roller skate bottom taped to his tail so that it doesn't get in the way while he's, uh, you know, ripping and shredding some, like, crazy curves on the half pipe. He's uh, he's going to throw a uh, a double, double 720 McTwist, uh, Christ Air, Hasoy, Rocket Air action. That's those are all real words that I didn't just completely make up because I was a total 80s skater just like Mondo Gecko. Dude, Wave 4 brings it with what is arguably the coolest figure to date in the line with Muck Man. Oh my gosh, don't you wish that the guys at Super 7 got to sculpt like Swamp Thing or Man Thing for Marvel or DC? If they did it anything like this, it would be so great. You know, this guy is like every Cabbage Patch Kids nightmare uh like more, more like a garbage pail kid look he's got mushrooms growing on his arm bones are hanging out there's fish you know the original figure had a play feature where you could put like the mutagen ooze in him and so this one kind of maintains that and you can see absolutely through but look they've got like veins popping through the the hole plus on the original packaging they talked about the fact that he has a clothespin over his nose not because he smells so bad but to try to keep all of the muck in. The clothespin was to keep muck in, not to keep the smell out. There's matches down here. He also uh, is pretty easy to stand because this foot is like sculpted fully onto a manhole cover. Here's another piece of pizza. Bones coming out. Just, just an absolutely gorgeous sculpt. Plus, he came with his friend, Joe Eyeball. Now, why would you call this little thing in Oscar the Grouch's trash can Joe Eyeball? Ah, because he's got a third eye. Yes, he does. He's got a third eye poking out of his, like, tail. So Joe Eyeball was just kind of a, a single-colored pack-in with the original figure, but now he gets a full sculpt to go with this monstrous muck man. Wave 5 keeps crushing it with Samurai Leo, the evil alien Krang, underwater superhero Ray Filet, and this gorgeous leatherhead figure. Now that we're up to wave five and we've gotten all of our basic turtles in the line, it's time to start breaking out the variants, and I can think of no better place to start than with Samurai Leo. This was actually one of the first turtle variants in the original line, so it's cool that they use that as the one here. And, oh man, you talk about really going all out on this samurai armor. There are so many different paint apps on this. I mean, there's just so many different colors that they use on this figure. I love that he's got these square-toed sandals going on. He's got the guards at both his thighs and his shins, but that head sculpt really, really brings home the samurai look. This is the kind of thing that I bet the guys at uh, Super 7 were like, 
oh, if we can just get this line to continue until we can start doing turtle variants, then we can really start to have fun. And you could tell that they did with Samurai Leo. Wave 5 is so freaking good, I don't even know where to start, but I do love this Ray Filet figure. So, I gotta say, Ray here looks like, he looks like he could be a superhero on Spongebob. I don't know if it's because he's got, you know, a little bit of that that look that uh, looks like what they had on the show, but I love this, like, huge manta ray, and look at the paint on that, how it's got that great water look. He's got the tail that's actually articulated. He comes with flippers and a manta ray blaster, plus that head is just so awesome. This Aquaman-looking chest, so good. But this is one where I've got to show you some of the accessories, because he does come with a more angry kind of open-mouthed head, which fits right on. But as I've mentioned earlier, all of these figures came with the original pack-ins, where you could pop off the single-colored uh, toys that came in the original Playmates line, and Ray Filet came with like a rope and an anchor. But what the guys at Super 7 did was they said, nah, let's take that all the way, and actually gave us this incredible braided rope with a silver anchor on it. This is a nice piece, and the kind of thing that really should come with a deluxe figure just like this. You knew it would only be a matter of time before Krang showed up. And of course, he comes in his classic walker, just like the very first version from Playmates. So this thing has detachable arms. They actually have articulation all over them. You can see how the legs can go into virtually any kind of walking pose. But he also has this opening uh, canopy so that you can pull out the Krang himself. And this is like the maniacal crazy Krang. He does have articulated tendrils. You know, what would you what would you call these things? But we got two versions with this set. We also got like a laughing Krang. So both of them fit nicely. Their arms pop right out of these disgusting alien brain monster things. Krang. In case you haven't picked up on it yet, I'm trying to save what I consider to be the best figure in each wave for last, and that is most assuredly the case with Leatherhead. Oh, the guys back at um, Playmates really went nuts with their Cajun-inspired gator, and the dudes at Super 7 just took it to the next level. There is so much detail on this figure, all the way from his like cane pole that he goes fishing with, to the fact that he's got a fish hook up here in his hat. He's got the great alligator snout that opens up. There's even a sculpted uvula back there, that little thing that hangs down in the back of your throat. Yep, they included that. He's got his tattered vest, his giant gold buckle tied around, a little bit of a money bag. And then back here on the back, his gun just fell off, but they really went all out with the Cajun stuff with this giant crawdad and another little turtle hanging from his back. I'm not exactly sure what these feathers are, but look at this shotgun that he comes with. The original came with a shotgun, but this one has all of that paint detail. Plus, just like the original, he comes with, I guess this is a bear trap, and it actually does snap together. I guess in this case, it would be a turtle trap, right? Because, you know, he fights the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But... Leatherhead is one of the absolute tops in this line, particularly from a detail standpoint. Wave 6 brings us home with Surfer Michelangelo, the Turtles' enemy Slash, the oh-so-rare Scratch, and Disney lawsuit waiting to happen, Ace Duck. Mikey gets his first individual themed figure as we start off Wave 6 with Sewer Surfer Mikey. And again, they went all out with all the little details, all the shells that are on his wetsuit. Plus, he's got like baby sharks popping out and like an eel coming out over here. He still can hold his nunchucks in the back, just like the original figure. But look at that like cowabunga dude facial sculpt with his tongue hanging out. And of course, even his surfboard says cowabunga, which he's riding with giant octopus encrusted flippers. So we'll let that slide. But this is the kind of fun stuff that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle line veered into. And this, I think, is one of the reasons why this line stayed so fresh with kids and lasted on store shelves for a full decade, becoming truly 
one of the golden properties in the history of action figures. Ace Duck is just one of the cooler designs in the entire line. He was actually one of the earlier Playmates figures, I think coming out in like 1989, so it was great to see him get a shout out in the Ultimates line. But what's cooler than a bombardier jacket wearing pilot duck? Not anything I can think of, particularly one that has a bandolier full of grenades coming off. Fully articulated wings and tail, comes with this great machine gun, and I've got him with his kind of flight cap and his goggles on with the stogie kind of popping out of the side. But he does also come with the more traditional head sculpt where he's just wearing his captain's hat, which is, whoops, nice catch, which is actually removable. And you can see where it's sculpted in so that it fits nicely right on his head. So whichever way you want to display him, either in his action mode or in his captain mode, you are hard pressed to go wrong with a figure as cool as Ace Duck. Slash just has the perfect look for a big dumb bad guy. And man, did they really bring that through with this. Look at those teeth and that crazy big yellow eye on this giant turtle body. So he is significantly larger than our other turtles. You can see here's Donnie for comparison and how much bigger Slash is. So that gives him that sense of menace that you really need in a hulking bad dude. He's got claws coming off. He's got spikes on his shell. He's got these insane jagged daggers that he's going at. There's shooting stars on his belt, and of course skulls, because all bad guys have skulls, but Slash is the kind of bad guy that every turtle needs to be able to fight. Before we get to the final figure in Wave 6, we did get a package full of Mousers. Now, they have a little bit of different deco on each of them. Some of them, like these two, are a little bit more battle damaged, where these are a little bit cleaner. They're the same sculpt as the Mouser that we got with Bacter Stockman back in the very first series, but they're really cool, and it's nice to have like a whole army of Mousers jumping around. These these jaws are articulated. They're a little bit stiff, but once you get them moving, they move pretty great. But Mousers go back, I believe, to like the second issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles all the way back in like 1984-85. So they're a worthy addition to this collection. Oh yes, if you know, you know. Here it is, the holy grail for collectors of the original Playmates line, Scratch. So Scratch came out in one of the final waves in like 1993, and he was like way under-ordered. I believe the only time that he actually appeared was in like a, a, a video game, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 video game. So he was, you know, kind of a, a really underrepresented character in the line, and he went on to become one of the most valuable figures that's out there. I think a carded version in 2021 sold for over $10,000. So that's what we're talking about. So Scratch is a bad guy. You can see he's all scratched up back here and he has been put away for all of his nine lives. And you can see that his inmate number is 0009. Now he's planning on getting out because look, he's got a nail file right here around his neck. He's got one boot on and his scratchy claw tooth off. And of course, he's got his old ball and chain. So, you know, this was one of the figures that very, very few Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle collectors are lucky enough to have. And I'm super glad that they dipped into a figure that's a little bit later in the line for the Ultimates line. Now, you got Scratch, but don't forget, he also came with his partner in crime, Jailbird. So, get a little bonus figure with this one. Strong work by the Ultimates team. This line is still going strong, so if you want to see future waves reviewed, let me know in the comments. For even more carbon scoring, consider a channel membership. You get exclusive videos and early access to new ones. And as always, for the best in comics history and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.